Okay, Lost Cup. Fun facts. Uh, the Twilight Tour Egypt level here, I believe, along with the dinosaur level, was were two scrapped ideas for the original game because they were too complicated and there wasn't enough space on the disc. I believe is Fate Crash. Other fun fact, Fate Crash, I think everyone knows this, is, was literally invented for this game. Uh, or Crash 3, whichever came first. I think he appears in the background of Crash 3. Uh, originally. Uh, he's made because Naughty Dog were taking the piss out of bootleggers. So loads of people were counterfeiting Crash Bandicoot in the 90s and making loads of counterfeit Crash dolls with like the wrong features. You can guess which countries. <laughs> the ones that are known for massive counterfeits and just you know constant <laughs> copyright infringement. <clears throat> yeah, those guys. Uh, various places all over the world. Uh, were making these kind of dorky Crash Bandicoot things, so they made one called Fake Crash, where he has big goofy teeth and big, big eyebrows, because like the whole joke is like, ah, look, they always get their proportions wrong. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird, uh, you know. I guess if you're bored, you can just do that. I'm trying to find a cool color. like it would look good in black. This is not black. Weirdly, I don't have very many shades of black for like carts. Spectral purple. I thought I had Nautilus. The Nautilus is default color, but apparently I don't or I'm just stupid. This looks okay. Yeah, I was really playing around the Halloween time because I was like, I need to get Embryo. I need to get Embryo. And I had like, I caught Nina and Komodo Mo first. I was like, oh, fuck you, Komodo Mo. <laughs> Where's Embryo? <laughs> what other Bandicoot facts do I have while it's loading? Uh, the company that made all of the sound for the original Crash Bandicoot uh, were given a very short timeline and were given hardly any instruments to complete and very limited data to complete the entire original soundtrack of Crash Bandicoot 1, which is very often why people say, wow, this soundtrack is nowhere near as iconic as like Sonic or like Mario. But I think they did a really good job considering, and I actually really enjoyed the music, including to like the theme to Upstream, Deal Deal, you know, like, I think they did a really good job, but that's why it relies a lot on MIDI and a lot on, like, the same kind of instruments used a lot and some really impromptu kind of, like, sound effects and samples thrown in. That's why. Very talented musicians to write the entire soundtrack in, like, basically a week or so. I think. Maybe I'm just telling a load of bollocks facts. <laughs> oh no! There's a corner there. Also, get it? It's called Clockwork Wumper, like Clockwork Orange. And it's in the Lost Cup because uh, it's like not in the other Nitro Cup. Oops. And everyone's like, oh no! Bring back the Clockwork Wumper track! No one ever. <laughs> now, not being funny, the tracks in Nitro Kart, the PS2 game, were really generic. The enemy characters were really generic. And then, like I said before, you have a fuck ton of a gallery of characters pre made. And every new studio that got their hands on this IP went, we're gonna make our own. And then they made really bad shit that was super generic. And it was like, I know, it's a kid's game. You could feel the execs standing over them saying, kid's game. Robot. Monkey. Some other bullshit. 
Look, it's a shark that can talk and has laser guns. Kids like that, right? Finding Nemo came out, right? But it's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, like, they're so soulless. Like, you know, there's a lot of shit going on with the original cast. And, like, the later into the PS2 era that you go, the more you realize they were just doing shit for, like, because an exec was standing over them saying, kids like this right now, shove this into the game. Make a character. My son has drawn an OC, put him in the fucking game, and you're just like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> fake crash is like a reaction to something he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Even though it's like a really dumb joke. Doing better than I was doing with Ripperoo, let's face it. Every time he wins. <laughs> hey, does anyone remember when they tried to be edgy and strange in Twin Sanity and decided for some reason to make Tiny Tiger a beret wearing, softly spoken fashion in guy who was like, you know, talking? I think it was supposed to be like some sort of like. I don't even know what it was supposed to be referencing, and I think if I didn't understand the reference, 90% of the audience probably missed it too, and it was like, was this your idea of being funny? Because it was done for a bit, and then Tiny never returns to the entire game. That game is just a fucking mess, by the way. It is just an art house... Any, you know, anything can happen, weird proto-indie title feeling of, like, this game is trying to tell me something and it's probably about depression. Or they just ran out of budget about two levels in and went, ah, oh, fuck it, that's a full game. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, it makes out that you're going to have recurring sections doing certain things, but you don't. You just stop doing it after one time of them introducing a mechanic and they're like it's just so short Twin Sanity is just so short and it's just like yo you can play as Nina you can play as this character and you're like I don't fucking care where's the rest of the game it just doesn't and it didn't even make sense or like I kind of played it half asleep I'm gonna have to admit because I was just like oh I thought this was going to be another thing of the video game series I really like from my childhood. No, they're trying to be, like, ironic or something, and trying to reinvent it into some sort of, like, ill-advised linear action-adventure and constantly, like, self referential Yeah, got him. Fuck you, Velo. And, like, I have abject hatred for Twin Sanity because I think that was the really, like, you know, if they kept the people from Wrath of Cortex, which is just, like, a bad, badly executed rehash of the warp room system kind of thing, same kind of stuff, but it's just really awkward graphics and it's not dated well. It had some ideas. Crunch was, that's Crunch's first appearance. They tried to meet new masks. It was, uh... It was, it was something. It had content, and it had some pretty, like, in-depth hidden levels and secrets and shit that were a bit obtuse, but, like, that's the standard for Crash. And then some asshats in the media went, Oh, this is derivative, so, like, the fucking... <laughs> The studios that got their hands on the IP next were like, I know, we're gonna do a load of bullshit. <laughs> and then it just turned into bullshit for the next generation and a half. He didn't even get onto the PS3 generation, really. 
That's how bad the PS2 generation of Crash was. It basically sunk the franchise for it until people got nostalgia for it. <laughs> like, you imagine? Like, I know things fuck up for certain companies. Like, you know, Spyro had a similar problem. But then they did something with him. I know Skylanders ended up pushing him to the back a bit. But, like... Oh my god, they just murdered the Crash Bandicoot franchise and went, Oh well, it's not making money anymore because we ran it into the fucking ground. <laughs> Literally. Did he say si senor? <laughs> well, the last one there's a Nord, probably. <laughs> wow, I'm dead. <laughs> Talk about shit character design. I'm a big green alien. You're like, oh. And then the joke is, I'm actually a small green alien. <laughs> oh, I'm not even fucking kidding. It, like, the whole thing about Emperor Velo is, it's like, oh, I'm a big scary, like, alien that looks like every generic villain in a cartoon ever. And then it's like, psych, I'm actually doing the Lord Farquaad shit. Haha, uh -huh, isn't it funny? It's like, it would be funnier if it was better delivered and I cared. <laughs> wow. Notice there's not really much dis like nostalgia for the PS2 era. Like, they pretend it doesn't exist. It's kind of like what happened to the Mortal Kombat franchise too. Where the developers are like, yeah! We will make the occasional reference to those characters, but like, at best I can give you Kenji... And I will reference Bo Rai Cho, but we really don't want to keep bringing Bo Rai Cho in. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they're really pretending that whole era basically just didn't happen, aren't they? Holy shit. It's the same with Crash. Crash has the same timeline of, like, quality to, like, era on the same platforms as MK did, except MK made a return in the PlayStation 3 era, uh, or the 360 era, because I had 360 and I had Mortal Kombat 9 on there. Oh, man. I'm so mad at, like, the totally cynical, in retrospect, and awful attempt to cash grab off the Crash Bandicoot franchise because it's like such a niche franchise, I can't see you making a lot of money off of it anyway. And it just pisses me off so much, it's like, can we not have anything that isn't just run into the fucking ground? Like, you know, it's like them bringing back Rocco's modern life and it being like the most cynical cash grabby shit you've ever seen in your life. That's a, that's a blue box there. What's this blue box do? Oh, I kind of want to get it now, but I'm scared to like slow down and let everyone go by me. Gotta know now. Damn it. Yeah, it's like, you could pick a better franchise, you know? It's like people trying to profit off of Croc by going, Hey man, you remember Croc? Well, now he's in Pog form. It's like, no one gives a shit. <laughs> Can we not have anything we're fond of that isn't just like run into the fucking ground by terrible studios? To be fair, I didn't hate everything that came out of that era. Like I said, Wrath of Cortex was acceptable to me, but I don't have any love of it. I just played it. And... Oh shit, I'm going up here. New. I'm not going to see it this time. Uh, yeah. And 
the Spyro franchise, I played Enter the Dragonfly and was just like, is, is this it? This is kind of bad. And then, like, uh, I played... Uh, a Hero's Tale, that's what it was called. And I was like, this is fine, I guess, but it's kind of awful. It's not amazing, but it's not offensively bad, you know? Like, it's like, I can, I can play it. It's playable. It's mostly functioning, and I kind of had fun playing it, so I guess it's doing its job. And then it... There was that whole era where it was basically Crash of the Titans and Skylanders, and I just went, I just fell off super hard. Now I gotta get the box. Gotta get the box. Oh, I missed the box. Fuck. We'll do a whole video of this cup again, just so I can get that box, because I want to know what the, the Beanox logo box does. sentences together and it's in a fucking Skylanders crossover and he has an Australian accent which kind of makes sense but he's just like talking to Spyro and being like oh crikey and you're just like what <laughs> he's not supposed to say anything maybe he could say monosyllabic words occasionally that's like the maximum I'm gonna allow you to have on my Crash Bandicoot <laughs> If you give the Crash Bandicoot literacy, that's just weird. He says, Bwow. And he says, Uh-oh. And he makes screaming sounds. And that's it. And he does a dance. I remember in one of the later PS2 era games, they make him say things like pancakes. And it's like, he's a great example of a platforming character having strange variations in his, like, ability to think. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> well, Velo, you just have some of the worst, like, one-liners. Is that the fake crash I'm playing? So yeah, if this was designed originally to be a uh, proof of concept for a uh, PS1 game, you can see why the PS1 was like, nope, <laughs> not doing this. And at a rudimentary level, too many environment changes, you're going in tunnels, it's just like way too big, there's a lot of set design, there's dinosaurs that need to move. I nearly threw myself off the edge. <laughs> That's what I felt like. Mm. Yeah, like, it's like the Super Mario problem. How intelligent is Super Mario? Is he actually capable of speech outside of saying whoopee? Like, because he seems capable of understanding the people around him, but everyone else is like, Mario, you need to go do this. And he's just like, let's -a go. And they're just like, oh, Mario. You were dropped on your head too many times, and now you can't say anything sensible. And it's like the same with Crash, where it's like, you don't, you get the impression he can't speak because he's like a failed experiment, but he's capable of like puzzle solving, and he's actually like a level of intelligence. And then in the later PS2 games, they make a big point of him being like a complete moron. And I don't know why, but it really annoyed me when I was playing them growing up, because I was just like, Crash isn't stupid, he just can't speak, and he's a bit goofy, you know, it's like, he's not a dumbass though, and he's not like, got, he's not like he's got brain damage, or like he just can't form basic thoughts, it's like, that, that makes me feel weird about playing his games, because then it's like, oh, I'm just forcing this 
uh, creature that's barely capable of forming his own, like, thoughts into possible risk and death all of the time. <laughs> Bad. Oh, I thought it was a normal box. No! So many shortcuts on this level, and I don't know how to use them. I'm too scared to find out. This DLC came out after I realized... Well, this season came out after I realized the seasons were coming out. So, I was, uh, before, I mean. I came late to the party and was like, Oh, they add stuff to this? Wow. I actually, bought it quite, I actually bought the game quite late, because I bought my PS4 late. Anyway, enough of me ranting. <laughs> Who's your favorite Crash Bandicoot character? You know, weird Crash confession, I've never unlocked Entropy. Even though I've owned various versions of the Crash PS1 game, or Team Racing game, and this one, because it's just so much work. You have to beat the time trial Ghost of Entropy on every track, which means you have to play every track and get a good enough time, and then beat his really good time on every track in the game. That's really hard, slash too much work for one character. So I've never unlocked him this whole time, and I've always been interested in getting him, but too lazy to sit down and spend what would be like 12 hours, <laughs> at least, of just me playing. I don't think even 12 hours would be enough. If you've unlocked Entropy, tell me what he says, and if he drives fun... So uh, imagine if it wasn't even worth the grind. It's probably not, it's just a different cosmetic after all. <laughs> oh no. In CTL, the PS1 game, it was real busted in comparison, so... Like, he was actually like all fives in terms of his like s stats and things.